Hello, I'm Annabel Brodie-Smith, Communications Director of the Association of Investment Companies. Today, we're looking at private equity. Investment companies in the private equity sector have performed strongly over one, three and five years, but had a difficult time during the financial crisis. So it's an interesting time to be exploring the sector and finding out more. Today, I'm joined by Andrew Liebers, partner at Pantheon Ventures, responsible for Pantheon International, and Richard Hickman, Director of Investment and Operations at Harvest Global Private Equity. So what is private equity and what does it offer to investors, Andrew? Private equity is a part of the market where certain specialised investors called private equity managers are investing uh, capital directly into private companies. So these are companies that are not listed on the, on the stock exchange and therefore not accessible to, to um, public market investors. The benefits of investing in private equity is that there's a large universe of companies out there which you wouldn't otherwise get access to and, and that, that can be a great opportunity. But also private equity has over now many, many decades shown um, when it's well done a consistent ability to outperform public markets. And so for any long-term investor who doesn't need the liquidity, um, private equity is a great way of boosting returns in a portfolio. And Richard, I'd like to hear your view. What is private equity and what does it offer to investors? So fundamentally, it's uh, in a form of investment into unlisted companies, uh, which massively outnumber the, the listed space globally. Uh, so there's an enormous opportunity set that the private equity is able to access including companies that currently nobody will have heard of but have the potential to, to become the household names of tomorrow. Examples would be Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Uber, all of these uh, were or are still private equity backed companies. And the managers that private equity um, effectively uh, deploys into the market will, will seek out these types of companies at a very early stage before they become uh, well known and invest in them um, where the, the greatest return is still kind of achievable well before the IPO, well before uh, any exit. So that's fundamentally the opportunity that, that private equity offers. That sounds very satisfying, really helping transform companies. Andrew, can you explain Pantheon's structure and how you choose those investments? Pantheon uh, International PLC is a um, UK listed company, uh, listed on the London Stock Exchange. And um, through it, investors can gain access to the investments that we're putting together uh, on behalf of all of our investors, institutional investors and um, Pantheon International. And so Pantheon makes its investment programs by selecting uh, managers to invest with throughout the world. So we have offices based in San Francisco, um, in New York, Hong Kong, London. We have people based in other parts of, of the world. And those people are part of our large investment team of some 70 odd investment professionals who are researching and scouring the market for the best private equity managers uh, active globally. And through that activity, we identify which managers we commit capital to, both by investing when they first raise their capital as a primary investment in their, in their fundraising, or by buying secondary interests in those funds at a, at a later date, and that's by buying them after they've been formed from an existing investor so that we're nearer to the point at which we, we uh, receive the return. We also co-invest with those managers, and we're invited by those managers to co-invest directly into some of the companies that they're putting in those, in those funds. And that blend of, of, of exposure through those three channels of primary, secondary, and co-investment give us access to those, to those businesses which are being invested in with very high degrees of specialism, um, very high degrees of, of knowledge and preparation with a view to driving a really good return that ultimately beats the return you get from the listed markets. It's very interesting. And now, Richard, can you explain Harbourfest structure and how you invest geographically? So, Harbourfest Global Private Equity, the listed company, invests into funds managed by Harbourfest Partners, which is uh, a long established US based private equity manager. So, HVPE, the listed company, invests into Harbourfest funds. Those funds cover a number of different strategies um, and also invest 
in different geographical regions. So if you look at HVPE in aggregate, the US exposure that we have is around 60% of our assets. Uh, a further 20% is committed to Europe um, currently. Uh, and also the remaining 20% is Asia Pacific uh, and rest of world. So we're pr providing a truly global portfolio. Now private equity had a tough time during the financial crisis. What steps have you taken to ensure that that didn't happen again? Well, the steps that we've taken managing a listed fund include maintaining a, a large credit facility uh, so that if we are subject to uh, a higher rate of capital calls than expected, so if the, the funds that we're investing in require more capital than perhaps um, the plan would suggest, we have the backup there in terms of the credit facility to meet those capital calls so that we, we fulfill our obligations as an investor. So that's, that's a key point in terms of the listed company. In terms of private equity as an industry, I think managers are now much more cognizant of the risks in terms of um, applying debt packages to, to businesses. So um, the debt packages that we see now tend to be um, what we call kind of private equity friendly. They don't have the same level of, of um, I would say, guardrails in place uh, that, that benefit the banks in terms of uh, being able to take control in, a, in a, uh, an adverse situation. So clearly that's good for private equity. Um, I think the industry in recent years has been um, very conscious of, of the, the need to sell into strength so that assets that were perhaps purchased um, pre-crisis, so in the 2005 to 7 period, have largely now been realised, so they've been turned into cash. And I think we're now in a state where we're uh, on, a, on an even footing, we're, we're seeing fairly consistent levels of investment, fairly consistent realisations. So you could almost say the industry has normalised and we're now in a, a business as usual stage. Right, and same question to you Andrew, obviously private equity had a hard time during the financial crisis. What steps have you taken to ensure these problems don't happen again for you? Well, similarly to, um, to Harbourvest, uh, Pantheon also uh, has a credit facility in place which enables it to, to um, effectively deal with any uh, unusually um, illiquid period in terms of the distributions that we receive from our underlying, so that we're always going to be in a position where we can fund our undrawn commitments because we have the backup to be able to, to, to do that. Um, I think that, I think that um, generally speaking, I would echo absolutely what Richard has said about the, um, the, the um, lessons learned in terms of, of the way that the managers that we're backing are putting capital structures onto, onto the companies that they're investing in. Um, there is a, there's a real memory of, of, of the, the significant financial crisis, and consequently we believe that, that things are uh, structured more conservatively, that managers are taking every opportunity to, to refinance and push out maturity dates in order to take maximum um, uh, advantage of these better times so that uh, the portfolio companies are well prepared in the event of a, in the event of a downturn. So I think there's a, there's a greater sense of, of conservatism within the, within the sector. It's important also to understand that in our sector, um, uh, debt is used uh, within, the, within the context of the individual company investments, but the funds that we invest in do not themselves have debt as part of, of, of their structure. So those funds are not vulnerable in, in, those, in those circumstances. And similarly, as, as, as Richard has said, the structures that we, that we run as a structure, we have a debt facility, but we don't, we don't put debt into our vehicle on a systematic basis because we believe that we can generate the returns without adding that type of financial risk. So I think, the, um, I think that the um, uh, industry is, is more conservatively positioned than it was before the, uh, the last uh, financial crisis, and I think that, that will serve it well. Yeah, it's reassuring to hear that the industry has learnt the lessons and is more conservative in its approach. So on to my final question. Private equity has performed extremely well over the last five years. What's your outlook for the sector? Our outlook really is um, that, as I say, we're now um, in a more, of a more of a business as usual environment. So I think um, managers have been cautious in the way they've deployed capital. Um, the opportunities that we see through underlying managers tend to make certain assumptions that are perhaps more conservative than, than they would have been 10 years ago. 
So a, a typical private equity manager will present a deal um, with the assumption baked in that the valuation multiple, i.e. the level of um, the price level in the market, will either remain static or decline uh, from the period to from investment to, to exit to realization. So I think that the industry um, is is fully aware of, of um, clearly you know what happened in two thousand seven eight nine, um, and there are there are steps that have been taken as we've as we've just described to to um, help ameliorate the effect of any further downturn that, that may occur. Um, so I think you know cautiously optimistic we see managers pushing into new areas, new uh, market niches, um, geographical areas are kind of um, are shifting somewhat. So there's more. Uh, activity, there's more investment into the Asia Pacific region, for example, than there was five years ago. Uh, so there's a there's a diverse range of opportunities for the industry, and I think it's still growing. It'll it'll push through into 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 new areas, uh, and we should see um, continued strong returns. Well, that's encouraging, Andrew. What's your outlook for private equity sector? All investment today is being done with a view to uh, the likelihood of of the economic environment changing from where it is today and there is a sense that 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 everything seems to be working very well today uh, that things um, are unlikely to get better and therefore might get worse and so every investment is being made with with that in mind both in terms of the potential deterioration of the economic conditions but also certainly with the potential for a deterioration in market conditions and that of course means understanding how valuable your business can be given those types of external pressures. So that is part of the analysis going into investments uh, today. Otherwise, I would say that the outlook generally for the industry is that we're seeing more liquidity um, in the private equity market. And I think that that's, uh, that's at all levels. So the, the uh, level of dry powder in the industry means that there is, there is more opportunity for, um, for private equity to buy and to sell, in fact, to, to other private equity. Likewise, in the secondaries market, I think we're seeing, again, significant liquidity in the secondaries market. And that, that outlook is positive because it, it, it fundamentally alters the risk profile of the, of the, um, of the sector. And I think that um, it's helpful to see that li liquidity um, in place as we, as, we look for, um, you know, as we look forward. OK, so optimists are prepared. For, to change your views if the circumstances change and it gets more negative. But obviously, at the moment, everything's going very well indeed. Particularly for, for the sort of investments that we're making, which are illiquid in nature, you have to assume that the environment might be different from where it is today, and you invest with that cautious um, sort of set of, of possibilities in mind. Excellent. Well, I'd very much like to thank our fund managers for joining us today. It's good to hear these views on private equity, but I'd like to emphasise we don't know what's going to happen in the future. Investment is for the long term, and you need to have a well-balanced portfolio. If you have any doubts, you should talk to a financial advisor. Thanks very much for watching.